and welcome back to the Profile Pod. I'm your host, Double A, back for another spectacular episode of the pod. Man, we got another great one in store. We got our guest standing by. Thank you so much for tuning in, wherever you're tuning in from. If it's Roku, if it's uh, Social Nostra, IGTV, uh, wherever, man. The audio, it's all good, man. Thank you so much for being here. It's always a pleasure being the host here of the Profile Pod. Uh, don't forget to like, follow, share, subscribe to the Profile Pod on YouTube. Um, don't forget about Social Nostra, baby. Social Nostra is a, a network of talented creators and podcasters now available again on Roku, uh, IGTV, and many other platforms. So go check out Social Nostra. There's something there for everybody, man. So let's get down to brass attacks, baby. Uh, again, I love to say that this is the podcast that brings on extraordinary individuals doing extraordinary things in life to inspire us all and this gentleman is doing just that we met in Compton California and uh, recently uh, big shout out to Kiki Smooth that we were at his event and uh, his album release party I, I think that was yeah, about a month ago now and I uh, had the pleasure of interviewing this gentleman as well so technically it's not his first time on the podcast but uh, we did a little spot interview. He's, he's got his own podcast as well. Check the Rhyme Radio. He's got a single recently released with uh, legend Mellow Man Ace. And he's got a forthcoming single with Kiki Smooth called Latinos Unidos. We're going to get into all that. He's from the Bronx, New York, originally now in Florida. He's doing big things. This man is uh, is killing the game right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome GQ the Embassy. What's up, brother? Cheat, 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 salute, salute, salute. Y'all already know what it is, man. It's your favorite Puerto Rican GQ to Ember. See, low life shit. CTR two three. Check the Rom Radio. Make sure you subscribe to the channel on YouTube at Check the Rom Radio, Instagram, and of course Facebook at Check the Rom Radio, and also GQ the Embassy. Y'all already know what it is, man. Double A, man. The Profile Podcast. I made it. Let's get it. <laughs> That's right, man. Hey, I love that. I love that, man. Yeah, you know, I appreciate you being here, man. Take you, take, thank you for taking the time. It was a pleasure meeting you, man, that, the, the other night in, uh, in Compton. You were out here and on the West Coast doing your thing, man. And uh, yeah, man, thank, I just, thanks, thanks for taking the time, man. What's going on with you, bro? Nah, man, first and foremost, I want to thank you uh, for being the genuine one. You know, you're a real one, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and I, once, I, once I saw you, you had the shades on, so at first I was like, he 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 got that familiar vibe because you know New York niggas, man. We like I never forget a face, <laughs> but I can't remember a face that got glasses on. You had the Tom Cruise shits on or something, man. But <laughs> the Ray Bear, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. You was real using your Top Gun element, but yeah. um, but but once but once I heard your voice, I was like, yo, uh -huh. and. Uh, yeah, man, it was it was great. You know what I'm saying? So nah, it was it's thank you for having me here, man. Absolutely, brother. No, man, we, we hit it off right away, man. And and yeah, we did the little spot interview there. Uh, which by the way, you can catch on on, on the feed on, on the profile pod Instagram. And uh, yeah, man, it was good. Man, you you know, man, we I'm I'm old, I'm an older cat now. I've been around a little bit now, and you can tell when you meet someone genuine, man, someone's real yeah. and shit, and and you just you know 100%. You, you know, yeah. Yeah, so man, you you definitely right there, man. You a real one too, and um, you know, grew up in the Bronx, and I, I love talking to New York cats, man. Like, y'all, y'all, you guys. Yo, you know, well, let, 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 me, let me let me let me clarify it though. You know what I'm saying? Because they gonna they gonna slay me in Jersey. So I was born in the okay. Bronx, right? I was born in the Bronx, but my parents they moved out of New York when I was like two weeks old, right? Oh, shit. so I grew up in Jersey. You know what I'm saying? Oh. I grew up in, yeah, I grew up in Heightstown, New Jersey, but we used to always go back and forth to visit all the time, right? And so I was like, I was like the Jersey kid that I always be talking shit. Like I knew everything about the Bronx, but I didn't know shit. <laughs> and, and then uh, my best friend, uh, shout out to Jay Strokes. Okay. Um, we, we, we came up together since like the third grade, you know what I'm saying? And we wasn't really like the best of friends, you know, but then uh, in, in, in my town, when you when you get to junior high, if you depending on what side of town you on, you go to a different junior high. Right. So he went to the crep school. I went to the Rogers school. Okay. And but but we all end up going to the same high school. It's the illest shit in the world. And when 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 we got to high school, 
then we just became inseparable. You know what I'm saying? I guess we got past like the juvenile crap. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And so, and and I'm gonna lead into why he's 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 a main factor in my life as far as hip hop, right? Mm. So in that time, you know what I'm saying? I was already on my own path, writing rhymes, you know, writing like 132 bar verses because I didn't know how to write 16 bar <laughs> verses. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to Logic uh, for for yeah, and Gervin. You know, Gervin is. Uh, this dude from from uh, um, uh, the, from my town, I think he was from Guatemala, some shit like that. Okay. And um, you know, shout out to the Guatemalans out there, real talk. And he so he taught me how to structure it. So anyway, but Jay, my boy Jay Strokes, you know, we 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 were so inseparable. Um, we did, you know, we wrote rhymes and all this stuff. But the main reason why he 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 became such a starting factor in my life is because one day he said to me, he said, "Yo." He said, yo, son. Yeah, he used to go to the Bronx all the time because his dad used to live in Soundview. And uh, oh. he used to always be like, yo, son, like I, I got to take you to the Bronx. I got to introduce you to my cousin. So I'm like, yeah, 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 no doubt. I'm like a freshman in fucking high school. My mom was not going to have me go to the fucking Bronx. I just throw it out there. <laughs> so, so, uh, so we, 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 you know, as, as a, I think a couple of years went by, he kept saying like, yo, my cousin, my cousin, my cousin, finally, I was able to sneak out, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, yo, we're going to go to the Bronx. I'm introduced to my cousin. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm dying to meet him. I don't know who this cousin you keep introduced, you know, talking about. So we, we go over there to the Castle Hill section of the Bronx, shout out to the whole Castle Hill. And, I think I know where you're going, go, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm in this, we, you know, we in this little Hyundai uh, I think he had like a Hyundai Excel. I would think when the Excels were was out, right? It was yeah, yeah. silver shit five speed. What's what's and, the time frame right here, brother? I'm sorry. Uh, probably like ninety three. Oh, 90, shit. yeah, some shit like that. Yeah, like okay. ninety three. It was huh. definitely before I graduated. Okay. Um, yeah, so ninety three, definitely. Yeah, nine, no, no sooner than ninety three, and and uh uh. I'm walking, I'm like, I see this dude walking, big ass nigga, yo. I'm like, yo, who the fuck is this big ass dude? He squeezed himself, he squeezes himself in the car. He look at my at my boy, he's like, he's like, yo, what's up, Jay? He looks at me and he goes, What's up, money? And he look at Jay, he said, Who that? He said, Yo, that's my cousin. I mean, that's my best friend that I was telling you about. And to all the viewers out there, the person that came into the car that he introduced me was the late great big pun. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yes, and yes. This was before Big Pun was Big Pun. He was yeah. Big Moon Dog, aka the Punisher. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Yeah. So this was this was before anything popped off. Right. And um, right. we go straight to this spot. It's a strip club. It was not. Yeah. It was. It was like a strip club bar. I don't know. It's the weirdest shit. I was like 16 years old. I had no <laughs> business being in there. And it was in West Farms, uh, Bronx, in the West okay. Farms section. Uh, right down, right down the road off of Tremont. All the, all the, all the BX niggas know what I'm talking about. You know okay. what I'm saying? I think okay. it was by the, I think it was by the, uh, the, 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 the two and the four. Mm. And sure enough, bro, he's there. They had just won a talent contest or some shit with his crew, the Full Eclipse crew, wow. and it was him. It was him. This dude named Lyrical Assassin and this other dude named Joker Jam, mm. and you, the viewers might remember them, but not as Lyrical Assassin or Joker Jam. They know them as Cuban Link and Triple Sace. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Damn. And so I, I'm in this club and they're rapping. You know, the DJs just throwing beats. They're just chilling, rapping, do whatever, whenever they wanted to. And mind you, it's the same night, right? Yeah. So I'm bugging out, punt. Pun's like, yo, spit some shit. I'm I'm rapping some shit, whatever. Pun's like, yo, you nice, money, you nice, you nice. And I'm like 16 years old, though. I'm just bugging. I still don't know the impact of what this man's going to do for hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, yo, he's crazy. This nigga spitting some crazy shit. But he was already heard, fire, huh? He was already fire. Let me tell you something. That same, that same day, I heard this, this, this verse where he said, I snatched the moon out the sky and blow the sun away. That's I heard that verse then. Mm. And a couple minutes later, the, the place starts to erupt. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, 
I, I see puns go to Cuban and he's like, yo, yo, man, yo, he here, son, he here, twin. And I look and fucking Fat Joe walks in to the to the club. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Sits wow. at the bar and shit. They give him a wireless mic and he's he's rapping. Like they, not matter of fact, they playing Mob Deep. They playing Shook Ones. And he's just rapping along with it. Because, you know, Joe, Joe's like a jukebox. He knows, like, every rap song in America. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, by heart, he's just a hip-hop head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then that night, you know, I also met uh, uh, one of the twins, Ray Boogie, from the song Bodique was on the set. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So the first night I'm in the Bronx with my boy, this whole time he's telling me, yo, you got to call me, you got to call me. I'm already with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm with Fat Joe. I just Legend. seen Fat Joe doing Flow Joe on fucking your MTV raps, and I'm with this nigga. You know, it just blew my mind, bro. Blew right. my mind. Wow, man. Yeah, so, these are legends, man. These are, I mean, yeah. And and, and, and so uh, how? I mean, after that night, you you know, you meet but Big Pun, you meet him, and, and yeah. Cuban Link, and 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 those guys, man. And I, how was there a, a friendship that kind of evolved from that night, or how um, did it, you guys hang it, out here and there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We. With, so after so after that, I'm like the most inspired nigga in America. Like just so you know, <laughs> yeah. At that point, I'm like, I know exactly what I want to do with my life. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if it takes me a, a week or a hundred years. I know exactly what I want to, wanted to do. Um, wow. So instantly, me and Jay, we become like these little, like these little like legends in our in our town. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because, you know, you had, everybody was rapping at that time, you know, but you either, you either knew somebody or you knew someone that knew somebody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and in my town, it was like some, some niggas would know cats from Philly. Some niggas would know cats from Trenton because I'm from Jersey and in Jersey, Paul Rikers teachers was the biggest shit in okay. Trenton. You know, oh, I, yeah. I, I wasn't too far from Trenton and you know, you also have Red Man. You know, mm-hmm. you you got you Naughty got Naughty um, by Nature. You got a you know a, a, a Apache. You you know what I'm saying? Mm, you got Queen damn. Latifah. So you know, we we like yo, this is crazy shit. And we even knew someone that had that had ties with the Lost Boys in in our town. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, like yeah. solidified shit. Like we knew for a fact that they. You know what I'm saying? So we were just like, damn. We felt like yo, now we got we bring something to the table. We know Fat Joe now, you know what I'm saying? Like right. we we chilling with Ray Boogie from Boricuas on the set, you know what I'm saying? Got you, bro. But but it was just ill to see Pun just command so much lyrical attention from these niggas. So yeah, we started to form a a, a bit of a camaraderie. You know mm. that one time sneaking out became like every weekend we 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 got to go there, we yeah. got to go there, and we just we would just always go to Pun's crib in Castle Hill and just vibe out. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. And and it was like artist um how should I say artist development right on the spot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and I was always between me and my boy, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not, you know, my boy will tell you, man. Jay Strokes, shout out to my brother. He'll tell you that when it came to hip hop, I'm the one that gravitated more toward with the pen and the rhyme, you know, the rhyming and delivery. You know, we used to uh we used to ride around the Bronx with pump we'd be like, yo, yo, let's go over here, let's go over here, let's go over here. And uh, we do ciphers and Pun would throw me on the spot. Like, yo, right. se- like, yo, set it off, GQ. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't GQ to embassy. I was just straight GQ. Okay. I was so, about to ask you, where'd you go by then? Yeah. Yeah, it was straight GQ. So he would be like G to the Q, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he would be like, yo, he'd be like, yo, 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 Q, set it off. And I'm setting it off, you know what I'm saying? And um, the song that he got on Jealous One's Envy um, is him. Keith Nutt and Armageddon. And I'll never forget the first time we pulled up on Trinity Ave, uh, Forest and Forest uh, Projects, Forest Hill Projects in the Bronx. And Pun was like, yo, what up? What up, Keith? What up? And I'm like, yo, that's Keith Nutt. He, and we in the car. And Pun's like, he's like, yo, let, let's spit some shit. Yo, and he looked, yo, Q, set it off every <laughs> single time, yo. And I would be bugging because I'm like, how's your cousin right there? He don't ever ask his niggas. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know, that was always a gift. You know what I'm saying? Damn, man. So and, when 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 Big Pun, when he got when you, you know, when he he got on, 
Yeah, when he blew up. When he blew up, I mean, what what was uh your relationship then? Your your friendship then? Was it? Were you Great. still? Was he less accessible at that point? Or was Great it question. still like like nothing? It was the same old, same old. Nah, let me tell you something. When Pun got on, um, for for me, uh, so you know, leading on to leading to that, yo, I used to, you know, my boy was in the military, so he would go away, you know, saying like do his military thing and I would I started coming around making sure I kind of kept that 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 flavor around you know that that aura that energy uh -huh. and me and Pun used to ride around by ourselves just eat like 10 sacks of White Castles for no reason <laughs> and just you know smoke weed a little he didn't really smoke too much he wasn't a smoker or a drinker like that you know what I'm saying uh -huh. um but I would be burning be driving chilling we'd be cracking jokes so we had a good camaraderie when he started to take off Mm -hmm. um it shit got weird you know what i'm saying it shit got kind of weird and he had a lot he had so many yes men bro that it's like even your friends become your yes men mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and mm -hmm. one thing about me that i don't I, i'm not a yes man i've never been a yes man i'm a good dude i'm cool and sometimes that shit can be mistaken for like weakness if you will yeah. Yeah. Or some or something that someone that could be manipulated, but trust me when I tell you, I could be chilling, vibing, and once I see that that shit going left, I'm gonna let you know, like, yo, my nigga, yeah. like I'm a ha ha nigga, but this ain't no ha ha moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so with that being said, I just was like, yo, I love this nigga too much, and I'm not gonna uh I'm not gonna make it a thing. But I'm gonna make sure I keep my distance, and it it showed me that said, you know, it's my time to kind of get myself together. Yeah. I can't I can't be expecting handouts, you know. Um, yeah. uh, pun Pun was already winning with the hardcore shit, and he used to always say like, "Yo, GQ, you nice man, but you got to get on that hardcore shit." You know what I'm saying? And I would tell him, "Listen, bro." And at the time, I was in the streets. You know what I'm saying? I was working, I was selling. You know some shit here and there mm -hmm. so i could talk about some things but i was like bro i don't want to be out there talking crazy because i don't want to snitch on myself you know what i'm saying yeah. and i don't want to <laughs> portray that that yeah. that image bro it wasn't my thing growing up in my part of jersey you know we was more like backpack rappers you know what i'm saying just spit lyrical shit okay. and pun coming up the way pun came up and had to come up he was very lyrical miracle whip shit you know what i'm saying but mm -hmm. he gonna talk about stuff that you know was was crazy at, at some times you know what i'm saying so yeah. so for me i was like eh. so i was like you know what? i'm gonna do my own thing i see where unfortunate where things are going and for a while it was like that it was just it was just like whatever and my best friend would always go around you know what i'm saying but and he would always say the old pun asking for you i'm like man I'll tell that nigga what up. I see him when I see him. Yeah. And um, uh, so that's pretty much where I had to keep the shit. You know what I'm saying? Just like that. You know? Yeah. No. No. I get it, man. I get. It. Yeah. You know, I, I I'm I'm the same way, brother. I'm I'm the same way. I'm a, yeah. I can't see myself as a as a yes man. You know, I'd I'd rather, you know, yeah, like you said, keep keep it arm's length, keep it cool, mm -hmm. keep it cordial. But you know, I'm gonna do my thing. You know, I'm gonna do my thing. And and, and naturally, I've always been kind of a uh, a loner anyways, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, like, uh, you know, just, um, introverted. I've always kind of just done my own thing, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Paul respected that shit about me though, because I remember one time I was chilling with one of my homies that I was getting money with in the street. Right. And we in the Bronx, um, and in the Bronx show, you know what I'm saying? You, you whip that shit. We whoop, 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 whoop. I'm, I'm bobbing and weaving. I'm underneath the four train on Jerome Avenue. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I, I remember like after a while, my man was like, yo, I think, I think, um, I think somebody following you, bro. So I was like, what? So I'm looking through the mirror and shit. I said, I don't see nobody, my nigga. He said, nah, man, this fucking Mercedes Benz keep fucking dipping and weaving with you, but he keep honking every once in a while. But I got the music bumping. I don't know how. I, to this day, I do not know how this nigga even caught wind of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Must be the shooter shit. I, I don't know. So <laughs> so finally, I was like, yo, you for real? He said, yeah, son. So I look in my mirror, and I see this, and I see Pun and Joe. In fucking one of Pun's whips. At the time, he's already, you know, signed to Loud, 
And I'm like this, and he puns like, he's like, like, yo, pull over. So I pull over, and I'm like, yo, twin, what's good? What's up, nigga? He's like, he's like, yo, money. He's like, yo, nigga, you on the run? And I said, <laughs> I said, I said, nigga, you know how I get down, bro. And he was like, yo, twin, what's up, man? I like, he said, I'm chasing you for blocks, nigga. I'm like, I'm like, so what's up? I'm like, yo, so what's up? He's like, yo, why you don't come to the house no more? Just like that. I said, you chase me down to ask me why I don't come to the house no more. And mind yeah. you, the whole time Joe's like, like trying to just like I know Joe's probably like, why are you chasing this kid down? Whatever. <laughs> and and yeah. I'm like, yo, you chased me down to ask me that. And he said, Yeah, nigga. Like, yo, come through, nigga. Stop, stop, you know, stop, stop acting like that. Just come through. So okay. Pum, Pum was like that. It was like he's it, it was weird. It was like when he loved you, he fucking loved you. But if he didn't love you, trust me, he's not chasing you for blocks to tell you to no. come through. No, you know what I'm saying? Not. So, and I didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? He used to get so mad because I ain't gonna lie. There was a couple times I went there, double A, and I would have, you know, one of my homies from the street with me mm-hmm. and I would leave the nigga in the car. <laughs> I'd be in Pun's house for like an hour, two hours. I'd just leave that nigga in the car and Pun would say, yo, why you keep bringing niggas I don't know to my house? And I'm like, nigga, they outside. They don't know where you live. He's like, nigga, they right outside. Nigga, they, it's only two apartments in this building. Like, you think they can't guess? I'm like, bro, you think I would bring somebody? He's like, nigga, stop bringing people to my house. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like 18 years old. No uh-huh. shit. Uh-huh. And I'm like, ah, right, yeah, yeah. You know, I would do it every single time. So he would get so pissed off at me and shit. Like, I'll be there for 38 minutes. Everything is gravy. And for some reason, he just peek out the window. Yo, you brought somebody to my house again? Yeah. Yo, get the fuck out, nigga. Don't come back until you come by yourself. <laughs> come by yourself. And we just had that type of relationship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Even up, even up to when he died. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, my my brother was in town. This is the crazy shit. This is mm. one of those. This is one of those things when you look so good for to your big brother. Mm. You know, my my big brother was in town visiting. He's from Massachusetts and shit. Shout out to Springfield, Massachusetts. Yeah. And um. Um, I, you know, he kept saying, talking about pun because pun was popping crazy big. I wasn't when the yeah, baby was, had just came out. So this thing, was like, yo, you know, I heard you knew pun. So I was like, yeah, you know, whatever. He was like, yo, what's up? You think I could meet him? Uh-huh. And I was like, <laughs> let me see. I say, I don't know, man. Let me see. So we took a trip to his store at that time. He had a, uh, he had a pool hall. Okay. On Westchester on Westchester Avenue in the Bronx. Mm. And um I pull up and it's yo, it was always like a million people out there. Mm. Whenever he was in town at his store, yo, f- bro, forget it, double A. Yeah. You couldn't even, it was stupid. So I go there, I hit my man up, my man Jay Strokes, he's in there. So I'm like, yo, come outside, bro. I'm you know, I'm here. So he comes outside, he's Oh, no, I go inside. I'm sorry. I come, I let him know I'm here. He said, yeah, come inside. So, all right, I come inside. But, yo, it's like a thousand people in there, bro. I can't see shit. So, I go in there. I'm like, man, fuck this shit. I'm just waiting outside. I'm just going to chill outside. My brother's like, yo, what's up? I said, bro, just chill out here. Two seconds later, my man come outside. He's like, yo, what you doing? I'm like, yo, son, it's crazy in there. I ain't going in there. He said, yo, son, you just looked at this nigga and walked out. He over here. He just sent me to get you because he's like, yo, why this nigga come and looking at me? And he don't say what's up. Yeah, I said, yeah. bro, I swear to God, I didn't see this nigga. And my boy's like, yo, a nigga's 400 pounds. How you don't see this nigga, bro? I'm like, yo, nigga, I'm not lying, bro. I ain't see this nigga. Yo, so we, me and my boy, we in the middle of this debate of I saw him. No, you, yes, you did. No, I didn't. You know what I'm saying? That type of yeah. shit. Yeah. Punk up, punk starts walking out because he's getting ready to leave anyway. It's getting late. So he turns to me and he gives me, you know, the biggest dab. He's like, yo, what's up, twin? He's like, yo, man. He said, yo, nigga, come to the house. I'm not playing with you, bro. That's what he tells me. So I'm not playing with you. Come to the house. And my brother, I look at my brother. I'm trying. It hits me at that point. Like, oh, let me introduce him because he's getting ready to leave. Right. And I look at my brother's face. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga is. This nigga is a deer with headlights just yeah. right at his ass. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and I can only imagine, and shout out to my brother, but I can only imagine how stupid he looked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I looked, and I, I give him like that nudge, like, yo, nigga, what you doing? 
He's like, yo, pun, I go pun. This is my this is my this is my older brother. He said, I didn't even know you had a brother. He's like, yo, what's up, money? Da, 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 da. And he then he looks at me and goes, Yo, I'm not playing, man. Come to my house, bro. I wanna, you know what I'm saying? I wanna I wanna see you, bro. I said, all right, I got you, nigga. Da, da, da. Uh -huh. He leaves and my brother's like, yo, I can't believe my little brother really does know big pun. Oh man. You know what I'm saying? Then yeah. I was like, I said, bro, man, you know, it's the drive, bro. We from Heightstown, New I'm from Heightstown, New Jersey. You know, on paper, I ain't supposed to know anything or 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 be anybody. You know what I'm saying? It. But if it's it's the will and the drive within you that'll that'll carry you. You know what I'm saying? For sure, man. Oh yeah. No doubt, man. It doesn't matter where you're at, right? Yeah. Hey, was that the was that the last time you saw him? No, <laughs> the last time I saw a pun um was two weeks. I was about two weeks before he died. I actually went to the house, mm. um, and I, a lot of people were there. I know, you know, what I'm saying all these stories of me frying on it, but um, I actually went to the house by yourself and uh, by myself, <laughs> by myself. I, yeah, the first, yeah, the first time in my life, I did everything the right way with him. You know, what I'm saying, and uh, I re I remember, you know, he was there. It was a, it was a bunch of people there. Joe wasn't there. It wasn't like you know all the terror squad niggas. It was just a bunch of hit like homie homies, regular homies. But yeah. Sunkist was there. His artist Sunkist uh, was there, and um, shout out to Sunkist wherever you at. Um, yeah, sure. And uh, and uh, so fucking Sunkist was mad cool. He and he liked my shit. Like I should spit sometimes, and he would be like, "Yo," he would look upon like, like, "Yo, this nigga's nice, bro. Like, do something with this nigga." Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but so as the group is like, we're all ch like everyone's chatting in the kitchen, and Pun was always sitting down because you because it's you know because of his weight. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, I'm literally standing right next to this nigga. Like I think sometimes I would even lean on this nigga, bro, because this nigga was so big. I like, we just we, we used to do shit like that. And this nigga starts tugging on my pant leg, so I stopped leaning on him. You know, I'm thinking he like telling me like get like get off. So I stopped leaning. On him. He keeps pulling. So I'm like, yo, nigga, chill. And he's like this. <laughs> he's, he keeps tugging, and I look. And he says, he said, yo, I got to tell you something. So I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I'm not even. Pun was a prankster. That yeah. nigga was like, he was like the real, he was like the real prankster slash thug. Like this nigga will slap the shit out of you or he will like tell you to come down, you know, go like this and like stick that in your ear. Like some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking he's getting ready to prank me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, he goes, I got to tell you something, right? So I'm like, what's up? So I, I kneel down and he says, yo, doctor said I got two weeks to live. So I'm like, nigga, you be fucking wasting my life, bro. Like you chased me for blocks to tell me that you come over. Yeah. And now you're going to, you know what I'm saying? And he says, yo, son, he said, twin, I'm not playing. Damn. And I'm like, yo, you serious right now? And he says, yo, doctor said I got two weeks to live. And it's like everybody's conversation stopped and everyone started to focus in on what we were saying. And so mm -hmm. now everyone's like, yo, fuck you. Yo, what'd you just say? And, he, and he's like, yeah, twin, I'm fat, bro. I can't, I can't do it no more. And niggas like, nah, yeah. fuck that. We'll help you. We'll this, we'll that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. Right, right. right. And uh, Pun's thing was like, yeah, right. And so I'm supposed to have mm -hmm. paparazzi take pictures of me fat. And I, and I looked at him, I said, bro, who gives a fuck? It's your life, bro. Right. Fuck paparazzi. I said, bro, exactly. you telling me, you telling me you can't run laps in an indoor gym, nigga? And what paparazzi is going to get out of there? This is the Bronx, nigga. They're going to take his camera. They're going to beat him up with the camera. He's not going to go nowhere with them. Them fat footage is going nowhere, bro. He might switch. I say he's going to have to be on the roof or yeah. hiding in the bleachers or some shit. Right. Like, I'm just telling you, it's not going to happen. Mm. And, uh, you know, two weeks later, we all know what happened. You know what I'm saying? Damn, man. So, damn. That's a trip, man. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I never heard uh, that he, he was given like that, uh, you know, a time frame. You know, I, I didn't know that was part of the story, but, but uh, yeah, yeah, man. But yeah, I mean, man, who? Yeah. I don't know what the doctor said. I'm not. I just right. know that he but just he was like, "Yo, I got two weeks to live." The doctor could have said like, "Yo, if you keep going like this, you may not have more than." And that nigga probably was like, "Well, I guess that's the time that I got," because you know what I'm saying. I can't, Damn. can't do it. Yeah.
But it was two weeks, huh? After that. I yeah, think. it was two, three, yeah, about two, three but, weeks, bro. Gone. Mm, yeah. And it's funny because it didn't resonate. It's like I when I left that house, I didn't feel worried. I was like, man, right. they're gonna they're gonna figure it out. He'll be okay. Yeah. He'll be fine. Yeah. 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 But when it hit me, when it when I heard it on the radio, I was like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, fuck. And then I felt real guilty too, because I was like, you know, I should have came over more. Yeah. I should have just you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. you know, but I'm not here to say, oh, it's all on GQ. You know, I, you know, but no. you know, I just, I felt like, you know, I had a little piece of that pie that I was like, man, I could have probably did something. You know what I'm saying? But Paul was going to do whatever he wanted to do, no matter right. if you should or not. He, he could tell you like, yeah, come through. We're going to run a hundred laps. Come through. And that nigga's like, they ain't kind of running shit. But you, since you're here, can you do me a favor and uh, go to the, you know, go to the wing spot and, and get me something? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. That's yeah. where the whole yes man shit will start to come into play, and I right, yeah. so. no yeah. man, but yeah, that, that's a, that's a great story, man. And you know, it's not every day you get to meet some, talk to someone who's you know who who got to hang out with Big Pun, a legend like yeah. that in the game, and uh, you know, but uh, man, so yeah, I mean, you've been in, in hip hop now for what uh, thirty? But I'm gonna say what thirty years now? Yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah, I mean. Um, in the time frame that I, I kind of like moved away from pun during the height of his success, um, uh, I was able to meet um, through, you know, very personal, close uh, friends and family of mine on, on, on my ex-wife's side. Um, I was able to meet Curtis Blow, you wow. know what I'm saying? And me and Kurt have uh, this 20 plus years now. You know, until this day, we we work together, you know, with the Hip Hop Coalition, the United Coalition for, for Humanity and the Hip Hop Alliance, which everybody will be hearing about the Hip Hop Alliance very soon. And we got some other stuff that uh in the works, too, that I'm that I'm a part of, you know, what I'm saying so that's that's my brother. You know what I'm saying yeah, definitely, man. No, I mean, you've been uh, rubbing elbows with some big names, man. And uh, let's get into kind of. Your 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 single that you collaborated with uh, oh, another, yeah. another hip hop legend West Coast, uh, uh, No Man Ace, and on the song Who I Know, mm -hmm. and, yeah, what, yeah, that how one. Come about, bro. Like, how did you guys link up, bro? So so this the beauty of podcasting, right? So I got check the rhyme radio, yeah, and so I give all first the first the first assist that was thrown, um was by Thurston Howell III. Shout out to the whole low life, you know what I'm saying? Two yes. L's up, you already know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, being a low life member myself, you know what I'm saying? Thurston Howell III and uh, also my big brother, Big Big Earl, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the whole low zone family. Um, uh, Earl was uh, um, co-managing Big Pun. And so that's how me and Earl got, got cool you know say so i didn't know earl during those times because it was like i was here he was here and then he was here i was you know saying it was like that yeah but once once i moved to orlando you know and i started working the scene you know i was able to link to him through one of my ex-managers and that's when he was like yo i know this dude he used to run with pun i was like word and then once me and earl met he had pun stories i had pun stories and earl one thing about earl if you start talking that talk he, Earl got so many connections is unbelievable. So if you say you know someone or you was around, he'll 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 be like, oh, well, make a phone call and find out on his own. So <laughs> when he made a phone call, they, was like, yeah. they said, yeah, that's GQ. He he was definitely there. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, all right, that's what's true. up? Yeah. So me and Earl for a few years, we, you know, throughout the years, we started building, building, building. And as being as I showed, you know, my solidness, you know what I'm saying? saying which you always got to let me tell you some to all you viewers out there make sure you stand on what you talk about you know what i'm saying so you got to also you got talking and be about it so be genuine be authentic that's why the that's why the slogan the catchphrase for my my show check the rhyme is authentic never augmented you know what i'm saying you got to be real about the shit if you if you ain't been there you wasn't there if you was there you was there that's how it is right so yeah um so with with uh, Thurston Howell the third and Big Girl, they got on my they got on my show, 
And they said, listen, they it was like, love, papi. You know, Puerto Ricans, we say papi, and it's out of respect. It ain't no no other shit. Yeah. So he's like, love, papi, you know what I'm saying? We're going to call this dude, you know what I'm saying? We, we giving props to the old school. His name is Mr. Shick from the Mean Machine. And he got the song, the disco, uh, um, the disco uh, dream, you know what I'm saying? From the Mean, from the mean Machine. And they were a group signed to Sugar Hill Records during the time of sugar hill gang you know what i'm okay. saying wow so they had a song called the disco dream and mr Shick is the first mc latino mc in hip-hop period to spit a verse in spanish you know what i'm oh. saying all wax all wax as an english joint but he spits his in spanish is he from you know what i'm saying he's from the bronx new york you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. puerto rican mr and Schick, i'm sorry mr Shick, look him up from the mighty mean the mean machine just put the mean machine the disco dream and you will hear that song and you'll you'll see well that verse mm. is part of the inspiration of your mr Shick of the west coast which would be mellow man ace oh, you know what i'm saying shit. so okay. when I, I and i was as a podcaster you do what you do research research yeah. so i researched mr Shick, and after the fact because they they surprised me you know what i'm saying i didn't know so after I did my research, I said, I seen this uh, podcast uh, on YouTube where Mellow Man Ace was on there and he called Mr. Shick. So he started telling the story about how he went, you know, when Mellow Man Ace was, you know, younger in the game, popping off. He when he went to New York, he kept asking about this dude named Mr. Shick, Mr. Shick. And mm -hmm. nobody knew where he was. He didn't they did not know who he was, but they didn't know where he was. Where, uh... So he kept throwing it out there like, yo, one of my influences is Mr. Shick, blah, 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 blah. And eventually it got, you know, it got to Mr. Shick and or, so, or, or somebody. I think it was. Yeah, it was Mr. Shick's like cousin or some shit reached out to mellow man ace like yo if you're looking for mr shick i got the i got the plug i could link you wow mellow man didn't believe him he was like all right well show me did that they linked so they built their bond so i said to myself damn i got mr shick on the show i'm gonna get him back on a one-on-one -on -one and do something that is that has never been done in all of podcasting I'm going to get actual visual of Mr. Shick on my podcast. Okay. So I got the very first one, make no mistakes, that I got the very first interview with Mr. Shick that actually has the visual, not just the, the over the phone audio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, this is pre Zoom, might, might I add. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So, so uh, through Shick, I build a rapport and I says, yo, man. You know, is there any way, you know, I could try to get an a interview with Mellow Man Ace? I said, I'm going to reach out to him. That's another thing about me, too. I try not to say, oh, can you do me the favor? And for, I try to build my own rapport first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But I told him, let me let me reach out to him first. He said, no problem. I said, let me reach out to him first. And then if you can, you know, say, hey, there's a kid. He's going to be looking, you know, to do an interview, which was solid, do all that good shit. Yeah. So I hit Mellow Man Ace. It took a little while. Through Instagram? Or? Nah, through Facebook. You know what okay. I'm saying? I think I might have had both, but I think Facebook is where I reached out first. Gotcha. Reached out, got a couple responses. Stay, stay persistent, but not to be annoying. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know how it is, Double A. Yep. And uh, uh, <laughs> Shick, Shick put his two cents in for me. And Mellow Man was like, yo, I got you. I'm going to do the interview. Cool. Well, we had such a great interview that what I did was every so often I would just reach out. Yo, bro, just making sure everything's good. Appreciate you for jumping on the show. We'll be all that good stuff. They did it a couple times. And I says, yo, bro, I want to do business with you. I also do music. You know, how much for the feature? You know what I'm saying? So he said, yo, you know what? I'll tell you what, because, you know, my brother put us on, boo, boo, boo. I'll do it for this much. Mm. Boom. Send it to him right away. Well, the initial song that I sent him um, is fire. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it's not finished now, but he turned it down. And he was like, yo, you know, send me something that's 
maybe you know maybe like this or like this so i was like you know it crushed me too i ain't gonna lie because i had the vision the video like everything the angle yeah. i was different i'm all about concepts too you know what i'm saying gotcha. so i was like damn son and all my whole team was like yo you said he turned it down i said yeah he turned it down he said damn that's crazy bro and i said the average person might have been like ah fuck this and i'm done with this and nah. <laughs> I can't do that, man, because you know what the saying goes, when you get knocked down, what do you got to do? Got to get back up, man. That's right, kid. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get another beat. Mind you, I paid for that beat, did all that, paid studio time, recorded, it's no problem. I bought another beat and wrote it, recorded my the hook, recorded my verse, everything. The whole song was laid out. The only thing that was that was missing was his verse. That's it. Gotcha. And I sent it right to him. Whoop! And he responded. He said, yo, I'm feeling that. Oh. I said, so that's who I know. If you, if for all the West Coast, you know, people out there, yeah. it has a West Coast vibe. You it know does. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, look, I don't, I send, if I go to your house, I can eat what you make. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's all good. I'll figure it out. Yeah, even man. if it's even if it's menudo, can't stand it. <laughs> <Menudo. laughs> you know what? But you know, Puerto Ricans, we got our own menudo. It's called mondongo. You know what I'm saying? Oh shit! And, and I'm not fucking with that either. But you know what? I'll I'll pick <laughs> I'll pick and eat what I like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's what uh, I did. Man, I love it. I love it, man. Hey, wait, where did you guys shoot that video at, man? Yo, man, shout to Guap City, man. Guap City does all of uh, the, a lot of Snoop Dogg's videos. Yeah. Um, and Mellow Man put me to Guap City. Um, and, uh, you know, we was trying to figure out a location. And Guap was like, yo, I got a, I got a spot, man. Why don't we do it there right, right by where um, Capitol Records okay. used to be? You know what I'm saying? And I said, yo, that's perfect because I know, you know, the history of Capitol Records, too. Yeah. So, I told Mello, man, I said, yo, we're going to meet at such and such. Mello was like, oh, that's even better. I used to be, you know, over there. I used to work in Cap Capitol Records. Wow. So we did this. We did the scene right there. And it was right on location, bro. No, no, nothing. You know what I'm saying? He, my man got, he had Tony Montana holding the, you know, that's his, that was, that's his assistant named Tony Montana. He's holding the damn shit to, to reflect the light. I'm uh -huh. standing on some, some, some uh, stolen ATM machine that's on the side. It was very LA, very LA. And I was very disrespectful. Let me shout out to the whole LA, but I was very disrespectful wearing all my New York Mets shit. You know what I'm saying? I saw him, bro. I saw him. That nigga Guap was like, yo, fool, you trying to get shot out here? I'm like, if you drive fast, you'll kind of think it's the Dodgers. I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. I hear you, know you what bro. Saying? And uh, yeah, man, so we shot it there. Shout out to Hub City Queen. You know what I'm saying? She's a real one. I just met Hub City Queen, too, just so you know. Oh, okay. Really? I, I, yeah. Yeah. Shout out yo, to Hub City. Listen, man, I'm the only nigga that you know that's going to come to L.A. on the 4th of July and go to Compton that same night, nigga. Mm. Never going out there a day in my life. And it's not like, oh, I'm this dude and I'm just protected. Nah, nigga, I, I know exactly, you know, where I'm at, you know, and I know exactly what could happen. I respect the streets very, very much so. You know, I, got, sure, I, don't, come, I don't come with that New York this and New York that, nah, nigga. We ain't doing that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But <laughs> I uh, so I, res I respect it. Just like if y'all came to New York, you want to see where it's at, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Of course. So it's the same thing. And I loved it. Fell in love with it instantly. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's where we shot the video, man, for who I know. That's you awesome. Know what I'm saying? That's awesome, man. And, and this, man, I think that was the, uh, uh, I mean, it's nice to see that, you know, that East and West collaboration of the Boricua, the, you know, the Latino connection, man. And, and yeah. the, the Chicano. Cause I know, I, I know Melo is a uh, uh, Cuban himself. Yeah. Cuban. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, uh, but you know, it moved, it, and speaking of uh, the Latinos Unidos, talk, speaking of the collaboration, the the unification, the bridging the gap, you know, the, the Boricuas, the Chicanos, you collaborated with my man Kiki Smooth on a track called Latinos Unidos, yeah. which is uh, which is dropping soon, correct? May twenty seventh. You know what I'm saying? We're three days so, away, bro. Three days away, man. So so when so probably when this airs, it's already going to be out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. 
So, which is fine. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, listen, after this interview, not not yet, not yet. After the interview, want everybody to go to Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, TikTok, you know, whatever, whatever you, wherever you listen to it. You know what I'm saying? And type in GQ the Embassy. You know what I'm saying? Kiki Smooth, Latinos Unidos, and enjoy the song. You know, that and that song was inspired. Um, you know, I, I buy beats a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, my credit card is like with, you know what I'm saying, with beat purchases. And um I, I caught wind to this one producer out there, and I'm not gonna say his name because I don't want everybody to go flood him up. You know what I'm saying? I still gotta buy shit. Go ahead, but bro. uh but uh I heard his beats, you know what I'm saying? And I was like. I was like, damn, his beats is real Latin sounding with a with a hip hop bass, you know, a hip hop drum pattern, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And I was like, I heard that beat in particular. And um, and I was let me tell you, all y'all producers out there, you know what I'm saying? You send me beats, you can send them to GQ the embassy at gmail.com. If you send me 200 beats, I might select three. I'm being real with you. Mm-hmm. I mean, you gotta be the nicest but not but even if i only sex to select three don't mean you're not nice it's just i'm very very selective on my beats very important i come from the the beats first bro trust me when i tell you Uh, and um so i heard the beat and my girlfriend is mexican you know what i'm saying so yeah and i I was i I grew up very diverse you know what i'm saying and where i grew up you know, I was, I, I you know, I, it wasn't too many Puerto Ricans in the town that I grew up in, in Jersey, you know what I'm saying? In Heightstown, you is black, white, uh, and a few Puerto Rican, you know what I'm saying? You know, Ecuadorian, yeah. Salvadorian, Guatemalan, some Mexican, you know what I'm saying? So it's uh-huh. very, very diverse. So I was already used to that shit. And, I, and, and the, you know, son, being Latino, we have those these stupid stereotypes, you know what I'm saying? And... I always yeah. said to myself, like, why do we have these stereotypes? Like, what? And as I got older, I said, man, that's how we get divided. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, shout out to all my my white people. You real talk, but yeah, you know, white people, bro, they all white. Just think of it like this. This out. You know, if you Irish, Irish will only say they're Irish, right? Yeah. But someone that, but the Caucasian race, they'll still call them Caucasian. Irish, English, Australian, you know what I'm saying? Shit. See, even Latinos, because if you white with, with blue eyes and blonde hair, yeah. you know, some Latinos that they 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 uh oh, yeah. they you know, identify themselves as being white. Mm-hmm. It's the crazy shit in the world, right? Absolutely. But you know, niggas like myself, like you, we got color, you know what I'm saying? We, you know, we we can't really escape that. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. so here we are though, you know, put a Mexican versus a Guatemalan or, you know, a Dominican versus a Puerto Rican, a Cuban versus whatever. And I was like, man, that shit is corny, man, because at the end of the day, we all spicks, bro. That's just it. It does not matter. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, for bro. me, I said, wouldn't it be dope? Now, mind you, I come from the era of authenticity now, okay, in hip-hop where, you know, you know, yes, you can, you can be inspired from somebody and make it your own, yeah. but you got to be original, right? And I said, man, I'm thinking of this beat, and I'm like, it's just automatically beats talk to me. Yeah, so what they, you know, they're supposed to talk to you and tell you what to do. I never did a, I never did a Spanish hook. I don't sing. I never considered myself a singer, just so you know. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? You heard me do it live. You know what I'm saying? And but my set, my dad was a salsero, so I got you know some of his talent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Singing wise. Yeah, yeah. And I came up on the freestyle era as well. So, you know, I could, I could sing a little bit. I got, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, wouldn't it be dope to come up with a joint that unites Puerto Ricans and Mexicans? Now, mind you, even though specifically I wrote it that way, um, it's, it's a message. The message isn't just Puerto Rican to Mexican. It's it's all Latinos everyone, together. Everyone, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody fight. Like, I want this shit to inspire a Dominican and a Puerto Rican to come together, or a Dominican and a Cuban to come together. Like I want I want this shit to you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even yeah, even all, yeah even my black people, man. Let's do black with Latino. Let's let's. The point is, bro. We all have to merge. All of us, white with Latino, white with black, all that shit, right? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to come up with a joint, this, that, and a third, and I know who I'm going to send it to. 
Shout out to Pause One. You know what I'm saying? Now, I sent the joint to Pause One because my brother Chewy from the West Coast, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I knew him for like 10 years and he put me on to Pause One. And I was like, man, this dope is, he's a good, he's a really good MC. This thing is nasty. I, I fuck with him. So I uh-huh. did the joint. Recorded it, mind you. I never send anything until I have it where it all it, it's it's a it's referenced already. The tracks always have to be referenced. We can like like double A if you 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 know if you was a rapper and shit, I'm like, yo, we should do a song about this that third, and you'd be like, oh, that's a good idea, and I'd be like, bet I'll send it to you when I got it done. You'll be like, cool. I don't I gotta do nothing. I just gotta do my verse. Now I tell you, don't write nothing until you hear what I got to inspire you. Gotcha. So that's what I did. I wrote it. I didn't even tell pause, which I probably should have did. But if I did, honestly, I, it, this probably would never have happened. So I, rec- I wrote it, recorded it, sent it to him. Pause was like, it's out of my range. Oh, I swear. I said, oh. like, yo, I, I said, yo, I swear to God, huh. these West Coast niggas don't never like the first attempt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, but. That, but mind you, you know what I'm saying? This is, uh, uh, I was like, I'm not doing this again. I said, I'm not going to get a new track. This, for some reason, I stood behind this shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And uh, I says, I said, all right, man, no, it's all good, bro. He gave me his reasons. Cool. And uh, I was like, back to the drawing board. I got to find somebody. But he tells me, hey, but I think I got somebody that it, it'll fit. Let me um let me give me a couple days and I'll hit you back. Okay. So, cool. A couple of days went by. That pause one is a man of his word now. Shout to pause. And uh he says, Yo, I think I found somebody for the track. I said, Word? Yeah, I said, damn, I didn't think you was gonna hit me back. I ain't gonna front. He said, Nah, man, I ain't <laughs> like I got you, my brother. I said, All right, cool. Who? So he says, Man, you heard of this dude named Kiki Smooth? And I says, mm. Ah man, I ain't never heard no Kiki Smooth, bro. Uh, he says, I'm gonna send you a couple links. Just let me know what you think before I so yeah. I said, right, cool. He sent me some shit. Bro, I was blown away. Damn. You know what I'm saying? I was blown away. I'm being real with you. Yeah. And yeah. uh I say, bro, I'm with this nigga. Like hopefully he likes it. He says, bro, he's gonna love it. Trust me. And I think a day later, he hits me back on like a three-way text message like a group chat and kiki's like yo blah 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 i'm I'm with it bro i love it man you know we're gonna get this this that third so i was like all right that's what's up cool then we chopped it up over the phone he's like yo what's good my nigga this and the third and i was like damn son yo you sound like me bro only on the (laughs) west coast right (laughs) so so, uh I was like, yo, so I, this was ill. So I said, yeah, man, you know, I fuck with y'all, man. I love Mexican, you know what I'm saying? We're going to rock, man. I love I love all my cholo niggas, this, that, third. Mm-hmm. Kiki was like, yo, nah, nigga. I said, like, what happened? He said, nah, we ain't cholos over here. No disrespect to the cholos, you know what I'm saying? I love my, my raza. He said, but we, we, uh, we black Mexicans. We nigga Mexicans over here. I said, like, I said, what? <laughs> He said, real shit, my nigga. I said, bro, this is a parallel universe, bro. This is exactly what we are in New York, bro. Yeah. So he was like, word. I said, hell yeah. She said, I bet, man. So he recorded it. I had him email the stems. I paid to get it mixed and mastered. Mm. Shout out to Genocide, you know what I'm saying, for Quarantine Cartel. Mm. Mm. And uh, and uh, then... Uh, uh, we also had we all and I don't want to leave nobody out, but I, we also had Cynic Loco on the track too. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Shout and shout out, shout out to Cynic. You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the track, the track was like stupid long at that point. You know what I'm saying. And I felt like Cynic really did his thing on that shit. Like I, I really liked his verse a lot. Mm-hmm. But I could tell that. You know, he wants, you know, Cynic is that gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And shout out to Cynic, man. He be doing his thing, man. Shout out to my brother Demo, man. So I I, I said, I told Cynic, I said, look, man, 
I because I reached out to Cynic and I reached out to Pause and I wasn't sure who was gonna do what. And then when Pause turned it down, I was like, all right, fuck it. Cynic will jump on the joint, no problem. And then he was, you know, he 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 meshed me with Kiki and I was like, fuck. Yeah. So I was like, you know what, Cynic, look, bro. Um you know, let's we'll do something later on. This, that, and the third. So Cynic was cool about the shit. He said, "Bro, I understand. You know, it, it's all love. You know, it sucks that I had. You know, I wrote it and this, that." I said, "Nah, I get it, bro. Hey, it's practice, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, either way, yo. Yeah, so it yeah. was cool. So it just stood with me and Kiki, and Kiki was like, "Bro, are we gonna shoot a video to this?" And I was like, "Nigga, hell yeah!" So Fourth of July, I flew out to to L.A. for the first time in my life, bro. And that was last year, right? 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right to LA, flew right in to Watts. I went right to Watts. Woof. Never been to Watts a day in my life or LA. And uh we, you know, we thought we were just gonna shoot the video. And yo, man, love you, appreciate you, bro. Good luck in life. You know what I'm saying? That type of shit. <laughs> but bro, we formed a brotherhood so fast yeah. that it was instantly. I was out there for a week. Mm. And I hooked up with Hub City Queen, hooked up with everybody from, you know what I'm saying, from Hub City, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Rich and Ruthless on in, in Kiki's camp. Yeah. And before you know it, bro, I'm writing, me and Kiki did another song that's coming out. It's called NY to LA, which mm. is crazy. Shout out to Choco. Um, Jay Huerta, we worked on a track together, actually. Yeah, and I did the hook for him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, mm. And then Hub City Queen. Hub City Queen was the first one. You know, her, she, she said, yo, GQ. So she called me New York. She's like, yo, New York. <laughs> so I'm like, what up? She said, I need you to do a hook for me. So she, I said, I bet. Send me the, send me the uh, beat. And she said, you sure? I said, yeah, 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 I got you. She sent me the, the, the beat. The next morning, I'm shaving. I write the hook on the spot. I, you know, I, I record, you know, I tell her on the phone. I sing it to her. And she said, oh, shit, we go to the studio, I record that, I record Jay Huerta shit on the fly, on the fly, mm. everything on the fly, you know what I'm saying? And NY to LA, I did that on the fly, so I did three hooks in one, you know, in one spot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and they were, everybody was like, yo, where the hell have you been? Like, who are you? Where are you from? Like, who does this shit? And I said, <laughs> I'm about this shit. So yeah. here we are now. We got Latinos Unidos May 27th, man, on everything. Mm. And we got more shit. We got another joint called Echa Para Acá. You're the first mm. one that I, that I this, you know what I'm saying, that I let everybody know. Oh, so, shit. Every, Exclusive. Yeah. Exclusive, bro. Echa Para Acá is going to be GQ the Embassy, Kiki Smooth, and Jay Vuelta. You know oh, what I'm saying? We gonna, yeah. yeah it's, it's, trust me, it's a banger. You know what I'm saying? And we got more, bro. We just, we just going to be I'm I'm on the team now. They fucked up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I'm, I love they, it, man. Now they got the first Puerto Rican. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? From the east. You know what I'm saying? For sure, man. No, no. And that's what we're gonna do, bro. It's beautiful, man. It's beautiful, man. It's uh, yeah, man. Yeah, no, I'm glad. I'm glad. Like I said, man, I'm glad that we got to connect, man. And you're, you're doing your thing, man. So what? What's next, GQ, man? What, what's What's next for you, bro? Uh, I mean, I obviously just mentioned. You got these. You got some uh, singles coming out with with uh, with Kiki Smooth, Jay Huerta, all those coll- collaborations. Yeah, man. What else you got cooking, man? I mean, what, what what's next for you, brother? Man, more music. The podcast to, to continue to grow. Okay. Um, you know, not just the podcast, but you know, I'm I'm in the process of actually launching a, a station. You know what I'm saying? An actual internet station. You know what I'm saying? Where it's going to be 24 hour check the rhyme radio. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be, we're going to be, listen, man, we're going to be playing the the pioneer hip hop. And and I need it from the East to the Midwest, to the, to the West coast, the South. I need all that early, early, early mm-hmm. hip hop, because, you know, you know, when we talk about hip hop, uh, depending on what side you're in, you know, for us, New York, you know, cause we're the Mecca of, of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but make no mistake, every section got their own mecca of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? No doubt, no the doubt. South got their mecca, the Midwest got theirs, and hey, LA, come on, man, Compton, man. Mm. What? That's the mecca of it in California. But we can't forget certain parts of California too, no. man. The Bay, mm. you know what I'm saying? So, you know, no and I want, and I want, I want, you know, the listeners and the viewers to get a lesson. 
mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But there's elements to this shit, right? It's called hip hop. It's a culture, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I need I need all the B-boys from the east to the west, man, to hit me up. You know, I want to hear your story, man. Just hit me up at checktherhymeradio at gmail.com. You know what I'm saying? We'll, you know, I'll reach back to you. I'll get your story. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you a legend, bro. Like, come on, man. You know, you deserve to get your shine, your flowers, man. Your salutes. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say the flowers, man, because shout out to other podcasts that brought that out. My shit is we going to give you the salutes. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And uh, y'all deserve that shit. West deserves to continue to be heard, man. Listen, one thing about the West Coast that I absolutely fell in love with mm. is something that the East Coast lost a long time ago with the cleanup. And I say, you know, the, the trains used to have it all everywhere, man. I remember visiting and I would just fall in love with the trains, the way they looked. And I see it when I go to the West Coast and it's all the murals, man, the graffiti, man. Oh. You know, you, you, y'all niggas, man, you, you, you niggas, man, you know how to, how to nurture a culture, an art form, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you got your own flavors, man, with the yeah. low riders, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm for real, man, listen to all my Mexican brothers out there and everybody else Latino out there, but let me just focus in on, 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 on the gatekeepers, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And to me, the Mexican race, man, y'all, y'all, y'all the gatekeepers, man, of so much shit, man. You guys are the mm. innovators of the low riders, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The Chicano movement, man, the yeah. low, man, the Cortezes, my nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The B-boys and shit, man. Listen, let me tell you something. Breaking used to be my favorite movie when I was a kid. Mm. And I used to always wonder where the fuck that was in New York. <laughs> because I didn't know anything about the West Coast. You know, I used yeah. to want to go to the Radiotron so bad oh, man shit. as a kid mm. you know what i'm saying so that's what i'm saying man i really fuck with the west coast i say it at the shows man kiki will tell you bro i don't perform with kiki until i can say my shit and i always tell the west coast say yo i'm from the mecca of hip-hop but make no mistakes i'm in the mecca of west coast hip-hop and i love y'all you know what i'm saying mm. and i think that's what resonates with so many fans Kiki be like, yo, bro, they really fucking with you out here, bro. And I was like, you know why? Not because they're fucking with me, but because they know that I'm fucking with them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So Respect they're like, yo, yeah, man. And y'all deserve that shit, man. And I want to see that culture continue to thrive. And I want to be a part of keeping that shit intact. You know, and just like I want to keep New York shit intact. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm like, man, we gotta we gotta unite this shit, man, because yeah. both of us are, are the meccas of this shit, and everybody in between that it closes in on. Listen, everybody is a part of that because hip hop has to be preserved, man. For sure, you bro. Know, I'm not here to be like, you know, fuck mumble rap and this time, man. When it comes to hip hop, hip hop is a building, right? Let me just say because I know we're getting, you know, but but hip hop is a building, and every Thing hip hop is the floors. Yeah, you know okay. what I'm saying? Top top floor don't mean that it's above it all, but I'm just saying everything has a floor. I was talking, I was talking with Planet Asia about this when I interviewed Planet Asia. Shout out to Planet oh, Asia, shout yeah. out to Fresno. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I told him, I said, and I told him that shit. And he said, damn, that's ill that you said that, man. I, you know, I appreciate that. Check out the interview with Planet Asia on Check the Rhyme and you see how I get down. Yeah, and sweet. um and uh, and I told him, man, it's just the hip hop. There's different levels to the shit, so it's not about bashing this level to this level to this level. We just gotta embrace it. So what people consider mumble rap, man, you know, just is hating. And I've fallen victim to that shit too in the mm-hmm. beginning without understanding what it is. It ain't it ain't that they it's mumble nothing. It's just it's just a different form of hip hop. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So we gotta respect that shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much how it is with all these coasts and hip hop. There's so many different levels. You know, when the South first came out, we hated on the South. Right. I love Outkast. You know, when the West Coast and the gangsta shit came out, you know, we hated on that shit a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But you yeah. know what? Then we understood, man. Hey, that's what they do. That's they shit. Yeah. And it and after that, it was nothing but a G that baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's so, just a, I, I love that, bro. I love that analogy, yeah. man. It's just a different flavor, man. It's just a different. That's all it is, and I love it culture. all. It's just love a different it all, part bro. of the town. Yeah, different floor, right? You know this, 
the second floor is different from the third floor. And like you said, it's, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, that's great, man. That's great, man. man. But yeah, GQ, man, yeah, man, you, you're an inspiration, brother. I, you know, I, I appreciate everything you do, brother, and the, you know, the sincerity, the, your genuineness, man. And, and like I said, you're a real one, man. And I, I'm glad Thank I you, brother. To, yeah, brother. And, you know, I'm glad I got to meet you, man. We'll, we'll, we'll hook up soon again, face to face. You need any time, bro. Podcast? Absolutely, man. You oh, yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I need you. I need you on my podcast. I, I, I would That's love a- to be on there. Yeah, we doing that shit live. We doing that shit live, just so you know. I do my shit on the fly, baby. But I respect oh. the, the edit shit. But we do this shit on the fly. You know what I'm saying? You know, man. I used to go live a lot, and I miss it, man. I, I need to get back on the. I'm, I'm looking at the, some platforms right now, uh, to to do the live stream. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna go back to that, man, because it, it's fun as hell going live, man. So man, we want a lot, you know. I, and I got my girl in on the on the podcast too. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, Fu- okay. Fuego, Fuego's unnecessary, necessary news. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Got yeah. it. Is you? By the way, is your girl from uh, the East Coast as well? She's from the Midwest. She's from Texas, man. Okay, Texas. Yeah, Mexican. Yeah. Girl. See, Texas. see, listen, man. Let the viewers understand, yo. I'm, I'm, I grew up in Jersey, Heightstown, New Jersey, by where the BX. You know what I'm saying? I lived in the Bronx for eight years. After that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm with a chick from Texas, Mexican. You know what I mean? Come on, man. How diverse, how more diverse can a nigga get? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm yeah, telling I, you. I feel you. I feel you, brother. I uh, love hey, the man. people, bro. I love the people, man. I love it, brother. That's what it's all about, yeah. man. And yeah, uh, man. Before we wrap it up, man, tell us where we can find you, your music, social media, websites, all that good stuff, man. Absolutely, bro. Well, check this out. They banned my first TikTok account, but now you can check out my other one at CTR23. Check the ROM radio. CTR23. Check the ROM radio, however you want to say it. Make sure you hit me up on Snapchat, Twitter, SoundCloud, Reverb Nation at GQ the Embassy. G-Q-D-A-E-M-B-A-S-S-Y and also on Instagram at Check the Rhyme Radio and also at GQ the Embassy. Make sure you subscribe to the channel on YouTube at Check the Rhyme Radio. Follow me on Facebook at Check the Rhyme Radio and also at GQ the Embassy. Make sure you uh, send me a dollar for a holler on paypal.me forward slash GQ the Embassy. And if you want that smoke, Follow me on PlayStation at G, the number two, D, A, Q. Y'all already know what it is, man. Oh, also for features. Features, man. Come on. What's up? I do this. We can work out the price. You know what I'm saying? I want to throw the numbers out there because, you know, yesterday's price may not be today's price. Yeah, they, but either way, hit me up. You can hit me up at GQ, the embassy at gmail.com or check the rhyme radio at gmail.com, whichever you know, floats your boat. You already know, man. Mm, there it is, man. I and, love the energy, bro. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give you a quick spot too. T T T. Slew slew slew. You already know it is. Favorite Puerto Rican G Q the Embassy, and you checking out Double A right here on the Profile Podcast. T salute. Ah, look at that, man. I love it. I love it, man. If that doesn't get you going, man, I don't know what will, man. That, I love the energy. I love the enthusiasm, brother. I guess said, man, you were an inspiration, bro. And let's let's continue to bridge those gaps, come closer, close the gaps, and and uh, I, you know, thanks again, man, for being here, bro. And nah, like all said, love, man. And yeah. oh, and shout out, shout out to my girl Fuego and everybody. Listen, we got we got the the clips on sale. You know what I'm saying for the for the ladies or the fellas when you smoke and you want to burn your fingertips, make sure you go to Fuego's clips 420 you know what i'm saying on facebook you know what i'm saying and you can hit her up also on ig at the original fuego and place your orders man we do this shit you know what i'm saying real shit you already know man you selling them out there baby that's it i love it bro it's beautiful, it's beautiful. <laughs> shout out to kiki smooth man shout out to kiki smooth jay Huerta, the whole crew the whole um, squad absolutely brother absolutely Season very- laughter <laughs> oh and killer left too man can't forget killer oh left. yeah Killer got to meet him. Pump City Queen, yeah. That's a humble dude, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Too Much. Shout out to Too Much. What up, baby? You already know what it is, man. Appreciate you, though, brother. Yeah, I got, yeah, I met all of them, man. Too Much and Lefty, yourself, uh, Hub City Queen, the whole team, man. DJ Fonzarelli. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have my man GQ to Embassy. You just heard where to find him. Go check him out. You will not be disappointed. 
Don't forget the single coming out, Latinos Unidos, May 27th. It should it already be out by the time this drops. So go check that out. All the uh, streaming platforms, audio platforms, you will get uh, video forthcoming. So coming soon, very soon. We already shot it. We just we just gonna wait for the single to bubble a little bit and then we're gonna hit him in the visual like this. Bow. <laughs> I love it, brother <laughs> man. Thanks again, man. Hey, I th thank you everybody for being here once again. Whether you're on the audio, you're on the video, it's a pleasure being here, having you here, man, being your host for GQ to Embassy. I'm Double A, your host of the Profile Pod. Stay tuned for next time. We will have another fire episode to inspire you, to get you moving, get you grooving, and to do something with your life, man. Something you ever always wanted to try. That's the essence of this podcast: is to motivate, to inspire the viewer, inspire everyone, man, and to build community, build, it's all about love, man. So once again, for GQ, I'm Double A. We'll see you next time. And always remember, to take it easy. Peace. Chill. Thanks a lot, brother. Love you.